Man. Where you been? Man, you, look, bro. Hot. You didn't I search for Bigfoot. Yeah. You didn't win and try it out for the Bulls. Yeah. I bet you you made the uh, Swedish Double Dutch scene. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> I guess we live. What's good, What's y'all? Up? What's up? I'm your boy, JT. And I'm your boy, MP. And you already know what this is. This is a two-minute of the mic show. The streets are talking about it. You know, we definitely talk about it. Man, we got a show lined up for you today. Yes, yes. First, first thing we got on, first part of our show, we're going to talk about Black Wall Street. Yes. Enough said. There's been a myth that... Pearl Harbor was the first time that ships came and bombed Americans on American soil. Well, we're going to tell you the truth about the very first time it happened. You know what? Before we do that, man, let's just give praises, man. You know what I'm saying? To the Father for letting us do that. You know what I'm saying? For letting us be here. You know, I just want to thank God for allowing us to do this show. Though we know a lot of people that saying that they for the show behind closed doors and not really for the show. And I just want to... Thank God for giving us the perseverance to push forward, man. You know what I'm saying? To keep this thing moving. Even in my absence of looking for Bigfoot. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I almost got the Easter Bunny pregnant. You know? yeah. mm. And uh, But my wife wasn't having it. You know? Uh-uh. That's child. I wonder, I wonder how much would the child support get for Easter Bunny? How much would you have to pay her? I don't know, man. It probably would have been an Easter eggs. I, I got a question for you. Since you actually met the Easter Bunny... Bunnies don't lay eggs, so what was her explanation about the egg thing around Easter and all that? That's another fabrication oh, it's all, of lies. That's exactly what it was. It was a fabrication <laughs> and a lie. You want to give praise? Yes, Go ahead, sir, my brother. You know I already did, man. I just, just wanted to say, you know, thank you to the viewers that, that tuned in to the show. Even in my absence, they, they kept my brother lifted up and kept, you know, responding to keep my brother going, man. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. It's 100. That's what's up. That's and what's up. All of you haters that smile in our face. And uh, talk behind our backs. If you can catch one. You know what the one is. <laughs> All right, let's go, bro. Second part of our show, I'm going to give you JT's. And this is my opinion. There's no... Well, there is um, historical facts to the synopsis of it. But this is just my personal opinion. You could agree or disagree. You okay. could add oh, in or course. subtract or delete. This is your show, too. For sure. And I'm going to give you my top five presidents of all time. A couple weeks ago, I gave you my top five worst presidents of the modern era. And to find that, you can always go on our page at Two Men in a Mic. That's the number two men in a mic, space between each word on Facebook. And you can catch that video when I gave you the five worst presidents of the modern era. And then the main event. Ding, 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 ding. And out of this corner. Uh, uh, uh. The main event. The main event. Should wives dress to impress their husbands on a daily basis. Now, should wives, not baby mamas, not the bus, your jump off, not your woman, not your girlfriend, because right. they don't have to do jack. Right. Should a wife, right. someone that you are taking care of, well, wives and husbands now, we take care of each other. Right. Because they no more, them days over, like how my father was the only person that worked in the house and mom stayed, them days over. So husband and wives take care of each other. Should a wife dressed to impress her husband on a daily basis. That's what we got for you guys today. I got my man's back. Yes, sir. We about to do this. First, we got to make the money. Yep. Got to make the money. So we got to give a shout out to our sponsors. Chop It Up Hair Salon, 6510 South Halston. Go see my man, Doc. He got you. Got you on the fresh fades. He got you on everything that you want. He got women in the back for, uh, for the ladies that do uh, hair. Got a beauty shop, a barber shop. Ladies, you ain't got to wait three or four hours for your beautician to take her time to play around because she's been giving you her money all these years and, she, and she's complacent with you. Go see my man. He got girls on deck that get you in and out. 6510 South Halston. Yes, Chop It Up Hair Salon. Fresh face. Flawless beers, razor crisp sharp liners. Go see my man Doc. He got you. Chop it up hair salon for the look that you deserve. Oh, speaking of chop it up, they got an event going on today there. And if you own a business and if you're trying to own a business, this is where you want to be. It, he's doing networking. So what networking is, he's getting all different businesses or business people who own these businesses. They're going to come in. And they're going to brand their product. They're going to, it's going to be a seminar. They're going to talk about how to brand a product, how to build capital for a business. That's right. First thing everybody says, especially us black people, I want my own business, but you ain't got two cents in the bank. Right. You got to have capital. That's, capital. The, that's the first thing you have to have to start a business. You might want to go there. It's from, uh, I think he said it's from 12 to 6. Actually, I should know what he said. I'm sorry. It's going to be from 12 to 6. It will be a, it will be a full bar. He will be spinning. He's a DJ as well. He, oh, let me tell you about my man, Doc. This man owned a barbershop. This brother owned a, a, a private club. He's a DJ. You remember Living Color? Hey, man. Yeah. Where he, he's a doctor. He's a nurse. He's an orchestra yeah. surgeon. Hey, man. 
That's, that's my man, Doc. He's going to be spinning records. He's going to have the Cranberry Club open as well. The barbershop is going to be open. Go and find out how to get your business going. It is free. It's going to be food there. It's no excuse. Let's get into it. Anything you want to say to anybody? Because you've been gone for a while. So I'm going to shut up. To, to a couple of people uh -huh. that, are, uh, that are already uh, chiming in. Sorry about that. No, you good. Uh, you good. Go ahead. Do your thing. In, uh, mm -hmm. Michelle says already. Uh, yes, a wife should dress to impress her husband. Uh, uh, we can't. Uh, uh, that, we put, we put in the cart. We put in the cart before the husband. We got a sponsor that's going to sponsor that part. So we can't talk okay. about it until we say a sponsorship. So it's coming. So anyway, yeah, this was just just shout outs to, to I miss everybody, you. man. I miss you too, I love my you, brother. man. I love you too, my brother. Can I, can I kiss you? No. No, no, no. 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 Uh, <laughs> see, that, that's what men do. Real men. We real men. Real men hug and kiss. Yes, we sir. love yes, each sir. other. That's my brother. Let's get into this. Let's go. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. You know, we often said, and I often have said it too, that why don't we have our own and why don't we, you know, we, why do we depend on banks and why do we depend on people that don't even want us around or people that don't want to help us? Why can't we come to get our own? Well, what we discovered that there actually was a time mm -hmm. where we had a whole city, yes. a whole neighborhood. I don't think it was the whole city of Tulsa, Oklahoma. It was a nice neighborhood, a pretty decent sized neighborhood in Tulsa. Mm -hmm. Actually, it was called uh, Greenwood. It was a small neighborhood in Tulsa. That's, that's, that was the name of the, uh, the community there. So it would welcome back, Pete. That's from my Susan, my sister Susan hey. said, "Welcome back, Pete." Wait. Thanks, darling. <laughs> P is back. P is back in the house. The dynamic duo. Thank you, Susan. You are, you were one of our listeners from day one, and we love you for it. One of our viewers, rather, and we love you for it. Yes. But so it was a neighborhood similar to Inglewood. Go ahead, bro. Yes. Go ahead. So um, during that time, and not only was it was it a flourishing community. But it was one of the most prominent African American communities during that time. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? So um, during that time, we were millionaires. You understand what I'm saying? Sure. We had the not just my house and your house, but the entire community were rich. Mm -hmm. Everybody owned their own businesses. Everybody had their own money. They, they were, you know, doing business with each other. They were trading with each other. The community as a whole flourished, bro. There was no... Can you imagine Inglewood where there's nobody broke? No, I can't. And this community, nobody was broke, bro. Everybody were millionaires the only way to being millionaires. Isn't that something? Wow. The, an entire That's like ghetto heaven. That's like heaven. You know what I you mean? You got Tupac say, is there, a, is there you, a heaven for ghetto? For ghetto? You know what I'm saying? Uh, that's heaven. Right? That's heaven. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. It's, it's, it's it's say hundreds of thousands of African. Oh, by the way, I'm on break today because I ain't done all these shows. So you're gonna do most of the talking. I'm about to sip my coffee. Let's, let's go. Talk. But hundreds of thousands of African Americans in this community where nobody was broke. Wow. I I was fascinated by that when I read it. And then I during, you know, with, with what you're gonna spin off on, which is during the early uh, the early twentieth century. Sure. Um, they started to call it the Black Wall Street because Why? of the trading that okay. was going on. So we was actually even trading within the entities within that we had that built we up. Had oh, wow. Built amongst each other. Okay. You understand what I'm saying? And then here's the flip side of it. There, during that time, there were no white entities there. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? None. Mm -hmm. So during that time, you know, we were able to, to flourish trade with each other, grow our monies. You understand what I'm saying? We were teaching the young the young men and women that were coming up were also being taught business. Now, for us to be so, uh, for us to blow up so hard, we couldn't have been the only ones that were uh, spending the money within ourselves. There had to be other races that was coming in too buying from us and, right. and, and, and patronizing That's the right. stores. That's right. Mm -hmm. but, but, you know, they, they really didn't talk about that piece. Okay. They talked about the, the, the piece that was happening among us as African Americans because right. you hear so often that uh, black folks don't uh, they don't know how to, to, to grow their money economically they don't know how to to invest in businesses sure. or they don't do business with each other right. you know what I'm saying oh they, they you know there's there's a crab in the barrel effect every time they attempt to put businesses together and to, to read this story and how hundreds of men and women started businesses and grew those businesses to become 
millionaires was was awesome. It, it fascinated me. Let me take it to the flip side of that. Now, you painted a very beautiful picture. You articulated you articulated that for our audience. For those who don't know the story, I advise you to look it up. It's just type in Black Wall Street, Greenwood, correct? Uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma, the neighborhood of Greenwood. Now, the flip side of that is... Thanks, Kyle, for sharing the video, man. Now, the flip side of that is that America, we, in schools, America has taught schools or have taught children in school that Pearl Harbor was the first time that America was bombed via aircraft. Or in other words, the first time that someone came over from somewhere else and... Well, I guess that would be true that someone did come over from somewhere else. But it makes the point that the first time that America on American soil was ever uh, targeted was right. Pearl Harbor. True. That's not true. Right. Because let me tell you what, and I don't want to, and I, I made a vow that I won't use the W word on here. You can say what you want to say. This show show too, but I'm not going to use the W-H-I-T-E word right. because of alienation. And there are good white people. In fact, we got to give one of those good people their black card in, uh, I make, oh, yeah. you know, their black card in a few minutes. I should have done it when I started the show. So I don't want to use the word W-H-I-T-E. So I'm going to say there were other, uh, the other Americans who were noticing how prosperous this black town were, who had family who were pilots and had World War II ships. Well, let me tell you what they did. Now, you heard that beautiful picture that my partner Pete just, Pete just painted. I'm going to paint a little bit more uh, picture of doom and gloom. So one morning, one morning, planes started flying over this community. Yep. And what they were, they were planes that were World War II planes. You probably want to go ahead and lift that up and relatch it because there's a latch on the bottom of it. That latch on the top, pull it, pull it down. And that'll hold, you know, hold, yeah, put it down right there. Or even maybe moisture the back of it. Okay, and you, you're so strong. See, I'm weak and little and puny. You're strong. Stop pushing the equipment. No. So what happened was that, so you just imagine waking up one morning in the neighborhood that you live in. And you see all these World War II planes that's just flying above you. They started bombing that community. Mm -hmm. They started bombing the banks. They started bombing the stores. They didn't stop there. I wa doing my research, I read, uh, I saw the video of one of the brothers who's about maybe 90 some years yeah, old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was a survivor. He was a survivor of it. And he said that they were just going door to door to the homes dragging them out their homes, yes. blowing their brains out, shooting them. Now, just imagine if that was to happen today. We could call 911. Right. I mean, regardless of what we say about the cops or whatever, let that happen in this neighborhood right now where we're in our studio. We call 911. This, this, this neighborhood is going to be filled with law enforcement right. to help us, yeah. fire departments to help us. So that lets you know, first of all, the government of Tulsa, Oklahoma, had to be part of this as well. Mm -hmm. They had to be, it had to be proactive, they had to be planned out, yeah. and they had to know about it. So the man said that he was begging. I guess he was like maybe eight or nine years old at the time. And he said, all, when they drug him out the house, all he just saw were these dead bodies just everywhere. And he begged them, he's like, sir, please don't, don't, don't kill me. Don't burn down our home, don't burn down our home. They burnt down everything in this neighborhood. They burnt down homes, they burnt down businesses, they kill people. And they said the bodies to this day is just stacked on top of each other in the ground. They just took bodies, just took bodies, just stacked them well, on top. Well, let, let's, let's, let, let, me, let me jump in on that. Let's, let's look at it. The year was 1921. And the Caucasian residents nice work. within that area massacred hundreds of blacks and raid neighborhoods within hours. Mm. Within hours, they massacred hundreds of of African-American men, women, and babies within hours. And then it was written down as one of the most devastating massacres in American history, but yet, you don't hear anything. We don't hear about it. We don't hear about it. And that's why I wanted to do this show because we've been seeing it for like a couple years now on Facebook, and we've been seeing it, but no one, you, ha you still have yet to hear anyone really, really talk about it, really, really go into it. Pearl Harbor was not the first time Americans were bombed from the air. The, the people of Black Wall Street, the town that they had created in Tulsa, Oklahoma, that was the first time. Yes. Yes. And it was so bad about it, they, it was done by other Americans, yes. by their fellow countrymen. So, so when you talk about terrorists... When you talk about terrorists coming from our oh the KKK our been our been our Al Qaeda you know, and our ISIS for you know, for that's, that's a whole a nother, century that's a whole nother show right there in itself.
when you want to talk about terrorists and barring people from the United States of America, mm. when you have some people that's right here that are home, I call them already terrorists. I'm not going to call them homegrown because no. they've been here they've since been here. birth. They were born here. And, and they were they raised just, terrorists by yeah, their they're, parents they're, and their evil, grandparents. They're evil people. That's exactly what they are. They're evil people because I've been in situations, and I, and I trust and believe I know this. Racism is not something that you're born with. It's something that you're taught. You know what I'm saying? You are taught to hate. You can put babies in a room together and allow them babies to grow up together, and those babies will love each other unconditionally. It's when we as adults step in and start to teach them the differences that they have. Well, look at you, baby. You know, uh, you're light, and then this baby is dark, and you're going to go further because of your skin complexion and your eye color. And this, no, no. It's, it's something that is taught by the parents to the children who grow up to be evil and nasty people who hurt people who are trying to strive to be good people. That's, that's my rant. That's my rave on that. I got a question for you about. because a lot of people that are watching that never heard the story about what happened to the brothers and sisters in Tulsa, Oklahoma, a.k.a. Black Wall Street. Black Wall Street. They're asking a the question, well, why did they do it? Tell them why they did it. Why One word. It? Start with a J. Jealousy. Jealous of how they were Jealousy. living. Jealous of how those brothers and sisters was prosperous. Jealousy. You know, if, if I don't have to depend on you, here's the thing. This, this country has always been built on people depending on other people, whether it's working together or working against each other. You know, you have to depend on somebody to either move forward or that person to hinder you and keep you. you keep know, talking, keep talking, robots. keep talking. You know, but at the same time, you know. We all need somebody. The somebody in Tulsa was each other. They didn't have to go out of their community to build things together, to build things so that they may flourish as a community. They didn't have to do that. What they did was they worked within the confines of the area where they were to grow their businesses and to grow their economy to where they depended solely on them. Then they allowed other outside resources to come in because now I'm in control of this, right? So I'm in control of how I want to lend my money. I'm in control with who I want to in, I want to let invest in my business. I'm in control now, right? So these people, these evil people couldn't handle the fact that African American men and women were in control of their own money and their own destiny. Back then, that was unheard of. It was unheard of, and it was something that they could not let happen. So jealousy led them to do exactly what they to did. murder. They plotted. Murder. No, they plotted first. Somebody said, "Hey, I don't like this," and then they got some other evil-minded individuals to buy into the lie that they were telling behind the reason they didn't like it. You understand what I'm saying? And it all reverts back to that nasty word, that racism. That word, that's a nasty word. And that's what made them do that. It was hate mm -hmm. and, and it was race. You're watching the Two Men and the Mike show. I'm your boy JT and I'm with my partner P. And if the streets are talking about it, you already know that we are talking about it. We're talking about the, what happened with Black Wall Street and the brothers and sisters of Black Wall Street and what they had to endure and what, was happen what had happened to them. And we're, dis we're uh, disputing the myth that Pearl Harbor was the first time that Americans were bombed on American soil. Now, we said a lot about Caucasian people, but I would be remiss if I didn't say that there are some good ones out here. Yes. Let me tell you about a sister that, yes. let me tell you about a sister I, that I talked with when I went to the uh, Mount Greenwood. But I went to the Mount Greenwood uh, rally uh, not too long ago. There's a, a Italian, Italian woman by the name of Philomena Palala. And I talked with her there. And she was there. And she wasn't on the side of, the, of um, <coughs> Blue Lives Matter. She was on the Black Lives Matter side. And she know about the show. And she's been a faithful follower. She watched all our shows. Actually, she just commented, you guys look great. Thank you, Philomena. I want to give her her black card today. Yeah. Because let me tell you something. I went on this sister's page. I'm going to call her sister. Yeah. I went on this sister's page last night for the first time because she, she shares everything that we put on our page. She's always doing them a thumbs up. 
This sister have more things on her page. She has a public page. Mm -hmm. She has more pro-black things on her page than I've seen from a lot of our own sisters by color. Yeah. And I'm not calling nobody out. You do what you want to do with your Facebook page. Right. So I'm not saying that one person's better than the other right. or anything right. like that. But what I am going to say, as a black man, as a per, as a owner of this show, right. Right. well, co-owner because you are too, right. well, yeah. as an owner of this oh. show, Philomena, Palala, we want to thank you for the work that you do on behalf of yes. us. And yes. you get your black card today. Thank you. you have your thank black card thank today. You. Thank you. Today's show has been brought to you by Chop It Up Hair Salon, Fresh Fades, Flawless Beards, Razor Sharp Liners. Go see my man Doc at 6510 South Halsted. He got you faded. He got, man, women on deck for the ladies. He got barbers on deck for the guys. You ain't got to wait all this time. You can get in, you can get out. 6510 South Halsted. Go see my man Doc. And actually, if you're a business owner, you want to start a business, or you're considering how do you start a business? You might want to go from 12 to 6 today. They are having their networking. They're having their networking seminar where people that own, actually, we should be there, but right. we, we're doing this. Um, they're networking where people who have their own businesses, they're speaking on how to start your business, the tools that you need, uh, capitalism, or capital rather, which turns into capitalism, <laughs> the capital that you need, and all the things that you need to start. Start your own business. You want to read what Philomena said? Yes, Philomena. We mean that from the bottom of my heart. Thank you very much. So, 6510 South Halsey in the beautiful neighborhood of Inglewood. We got a great question over here, man. We've had some great questions over here. You what, take over. Do all the questions. I'm about to drink my coffee. What's preventing the Black Wall Street from re-emerging? We have tons of successful blacks now. What's preventing them from coming together? That's a great question. I mean, I wish we could sit down and ask some of these, these African-American men and women who are choosing to invest their money in other places other than our community. We, 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 we did it. Yeah, we, we made did. somebody a billionaire. Yeah, you know. Michael Jordan. You know, That's the Black Wall Street. You know, we gave all our money to Jordans. Well, well here's the thing. I want, I, want, I, want, I want you to ask yourself this question. You know, what stops brothers from getting together and making business ventures? Me and this brother sat down and we, we put some things together um, and we rolled with it. There are no big eyes and little views and none of that. We're a team. We feed off each other. We love each other. That needs to go out into the community. There's a lot of selfishness. I'll answer your questions, uh, Derek. Excuse me. It's a selfishness. It's an eye complex. You know, when you get together to create a business, there's always that one person that want to be in charge. Instead of saying, I got you, hey, James. we're a team. I got you next. And we're going to build this thing together. You know, and what you, what you say, Cap? Fear of every time someone steps up, they get killed. Hold on, let me cut you off right there because Go we ahead. got James, James H. Moore says, the willingness to invest back in the hood and fear of loss. Let me just say this. And hold your thought because you uh -huh. got some good stuff going. I just want to interject and say this because today this is your show. This is our show. Well, it's our show, but you're going to use your voice today. <laughs> For some reason, not all, because there are no absolutes in life. But a huge majority of athletes, whether they're athletes, actors, entertainers who are black, it got to be something in their contract that says, we're going to give you this money, but you cannot help out anyone that looks like you. Right. Because they, you, go, you turn on ESPN, you see the little Caucasian little boy who don't even know where he is, don't even have a, have a half a brain, and a team is surrounding him, making him the team, uh, team captain for the day, and they just showing him all this, which is okay. You know, anybody, everyone deserves mm -hmm. to be felt good, especially when you have a disability or right, when, right, right. but I tell you what, instead of going through those organizations, those make a wishes and stuff that's, that their target is only a certain person, why don't you personally come into Inglewood if you're from Chicago, like Derrick Rose do. Come into the whatever city you are from when you get that money. You don't need the cameras. You don't need to make a wish foundation. You don't need none of these foundations that are only going to cater to one specific group of people. And they usually, like I say, Caucasian kids that... Don't even know where they are. Now, let, they let, can't appreciate let, it. Let me jump in. Put on that, that money into where you come from. Now watch this. And when I, I believe I said this, and, and Carter, you say fear of, of every time steps up, they getting killed. You know what I'm saying? That that's a fear that we can't. That is, is, is something that we can't be afraid. Of. Well, we, we we live in fear every day as black people. You know what so I'm what I got to do? Especially if, if if you were if that afraid, you wouldn't even come out your house. To go to work or do anything. Hell, you can get caught over by the police on for having a broken tail light, and, and your and, mother have to and, plan a funeral. You know what I'm saying? But I want to say this: you can travel from Atlanta 
from Washington, D.C., they come all the way back to Chicago. And, and all of those places that are ran by Democratic aldermen or women, you'll see the exact same neighborhoods that look the same. With the same names, King Drive. All the way, King Drive and in, 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 in damn uh, St. Louis look just like King Drive on 63rd Street. 67th Street. And, all the the, and it looks the same in Washington, D.C. <laughs> it looks the same in Seattle, Washington. It looks the same everywhere you go. And why is that? Why is it that our communities from this city to other cities across America look the same that have Democratic aldermen and women running these areas of the city that we live in and we can't catch a break and we can't grow our economy and we can't do anything but yet and still Ooh, Arab, boy, you're stores, on fire. Arab stores are popping up all over the place they're able to come into our uh, our neighborhoods our communities because I'm gonna stop calling the neighborhoods because I don't want my neighbor to be a hood first of all I want my neighbor to be a neighbor but they come into our communities and they open up these stores, and they put this crap into these stores, and then they sell it to us. But yet and still, we here, born and bred here, and when we step to those same aldermen and men and women to try to open up a business and try to get something going on, they look at us, or they try to find a way to block us from doing so. So first of all, we got to vote those that are not, not, are not willing to help our cause the hell up out of here. We don't hold that's them accountable. Got, that's what. That's exactly what we and don't hold them accountable. And they got to go. And if there's something that we can take from, we talk about those Kentuckians that voted for Trump and those uneducated, uninformed, misinformed people that voted for Trump in these little rural areas. We talk about them, but they did one thing that we can take a lesson from. When Obamacare was up to be uh, eliminated, it even make the floor because they went and they met with those aldermen and said, I tell you, I mean, not the aldermen, but the people that they put into office that they mm -hmm. voted for in, in Washington. Mm -hmm. And they told them this. Let me tell you what they told them. This is when you're watching, for those who just joined us, you're watching the Two Men in the Mic Show. I'm your boy, JT. And I'm your boy, MP. And if the streets are talking about it. We ain't talking about it. Bro. We can take a lesson from them. Because they went to those people who they put in those uh, positions to watch, and they said, I tell you what, you can pass, you can get rid of Obamacare if you want to, but you will not be employed next time the vote come around. Mm -hmm. Obamacare, even, the, the elimination of Obamacare didn't even make the floor. It never even made it, no. to, even for a vote. We have to help... For, for example, here in Chicago, there is no way Roseland, Inglewood, there is no way those neighborhoods should be the way they are. We have all these black aldermen that's doing nothing. Garfield Park, uh, Austin area on the west side, all of these places that are beautiful, that can be beautiful, that can be made to, to, to be tourist attractions. Since that's what the city like to have, all of these places could be beautified and made to look good, to bring things back to the community and not. They, the they took the money and planted flowers everywhere. You, are, you, are, you understand? What they I'm planted saying? trees and flowers everywhere, and now those same pleasing flowers, you have to maintain them. So that's more money going to the maintenance. They, let me tell you something. Rahm Emanuel and Governor Rahner believes that the CPS and Chicago public schools and all these neighborhoods are a breeding ground for the prisons. That's why you see all these charter schools, all these UNO schools popping up. They're not, they don't care about educating us. They don't care about us making, uh, being profitable and being successful so we can come back and make our neighborhoods great. They don't care. But see, they don't supposed to care. I don't expect them to care. But I expect the aldermen and the people that we put in office downtown to stand up and not just be a coattail rider of the mayor. Don't be a coattail rider down there in Springfield for Rauner and actually do something for us. And they don't. They should be out of a job. Do not vote for them. Check this out, Melanie. I hear you, Melanie, say... Uh, I see you, James. You up next. Invest in your own community. I want to ask you this, Melanie. I want to say this to you. I don't want to I want to I wanna just ex explain this to you. There is... The only way that you can invest in your community is, is if you're kicking back somebody else that's, that's, that's allowing you... Especially here in Chicago. Invest in your community. Anything that you want to open has to go through your audience. Anything that you want to purchase, you know what I'm saying. You have to go through all these things. You even if you want to fit, if you want to work on your house where you pay your mortgage and your insurance and all of this, you got to pay the city to uh, to pull a permit to work on your own property. You know what I'm saying. Let me cut you off right there. Property. Let me. I don't mean to cut you off. I got to get this in for James because I hear this a lot and and this makes me mad. And James is a, a great supporter of our show. He's been down. For us for a minute now. James H. Moore says, why invest? We don't care. Why should they? That is a bad attitude to have. 
You cannot have that attitude. We need to, sh when, we, when we invest and when we show them that we care, whether they care or not, we have to care. We have to make them care. They didn't care about Obamacare down there in Washington, but those people who need Obamacare, those Kentuckians, those St. Louisans, those, all those people from those rural areas that we laugh at and that we criticize and that we talk about, they made them care because they told them you will not have a job. I will not vote for you. I will do everything in my power to see to that you are unemployed if you cut Obamacare. Go ahead. Check it out, though. Hey, make mean, them care, James. But at the same make time, them care. At, at the same time, I hear where James is coming from. This, this, this is, and, and this is it. I'll go back to... Uh, Calling Kaepernick, right? Kaepernick stood up for us. I'm not watching the NFL if you don't get no right. job this year. I'm not watching the NFL if you don't He's, get a job. And this is the thing that I don't like. When people stand up for us, we sit down on them. You hmm. understand what I'm saying? When folks stand hmm. up for us, we sit the hell down on them. Not only do we sit down on them, let's let's bring it to, to, to what we do every day. For all of us that went out here and voted, well, on whatever it may have been, from the presidency to the judges to, to trying to make sure that the, the Affordable Health Care Act, to try to make sure that, that jobs are, are still are, are prevalent in the community, that our numbers don't go up, to try to make sure that, that schools stay open. Now, for all of us that go out here and vote on these things, there are another percentage of us who don't go out and vote but yet benefit from everything that we put our asses on the line to see happen. You understand what I'm saying? And that's a problem to me. And that's why I understand when he say if they don't care, then if we don't care, why should they? Because, again, when we stand up for what's right, we get all of these other lazy bums who choose to sit Biatch. down and not do anything. Right, right. But yet benefit. Bum bitches. Bum bitches. <laughs> but yet benefit from everything we do. Look at, look at what over in Mount Greenwood. The marching. Right? It was marching for something that was, that, that was right. Somebody was murdered. Somebody was killed, right? But yet and still, when that march was over... I hear you, James. But that's what we do. At, we talk about this. So, no, you, you, you can say what you want to say, but we're going to talk about it. So, no, no, you good. I get exactly what you're saying, yeah, my brother. you know what I'm saying? I get you what know, you're saying. You didn't say nothing wrong. You good. Real but, talk. But I'm glad that you posed that question because, again, what we should be asking ourselves, ladies and gentlemen, is this. Why is it that? When people stand up for us, African American, Caucasian, Take Jones whomever, too. we sit down on them. Joan, Joan says, hey friend, you guys are talking some good stuff. I love my alderman, but I know he can do more. But we as a community can do more. We all can do more. We, we get that. We know we can do, do more. We're specifically going at those who are in the position to do more. I think we started this off talking about the athletes and the actors and the whoever that make good. Why can't they come back to the community? Why can't they do what we do? If I go out there to Mount Greenwood and march and get called all type of names and come home where yeah, I break down and cry, yeah. how, it got to be an athlete that came from Beverly. It got to be an athlete that came from somewhere around that I'm area. It, it got to be. You know, so yeah, we know we all can do better. We want to just put the onus on those who are in a position to do, I can only do so much. I don't have a million dollars. If I had it, I would love to go into Inglewood and donate five to $10 million and just flip it upside down and create a Black Wall Street. I can't, but there are those who can. We have to put the onus on them as well. We can't just keep saying, well, we can do better. We can do better. If they don't care, why should we care? No, 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 no. You, you can't. know what, I'm not meaning to cut you off. Mike and we got, we got to go to our next segment, Mike bro. So wrap us up, wrap Mike us up. Saying something out there, and we're going to get back to this, but I have a test. I got something for when we come back. I want y'all, while we still doing this broadcast, I want those of you that are watching, all two or three of y'all that are watching. I think it's four of them. I think it's four of them. Show, I want you to do this. Because uh, Joanne made a, a, a very a very good comment. She said uh, her alderman is very good in her community. That's that's the key right Why, there. Why, because he keep it clean? No, she's calling it a community and not a neighborhood. I want you to do this for me. I want you to get your dictionary out. And I want you to look up the word neighbor, and then I want you to look up the word hood. And then I want you to come back and say to me what we can do to start block by block changing our neighborhoods back into communities. Mm. And then that way we can maybe start to build something and start to look at things a little different. Because I know hoods hang in hoods. And when you, once you find out what the definition of a hood is, you'll understand a little bit better exactly what I'm talking about. Next segment, you're listening to the Two Men in the Mic show. I'm your boy, MP. 
I'm your boy JT. And if the streets are talking about it, you already know we're talking about it. Let's go. This next segment of the Two Men in a Bike Show is brought to you by Gladiator Fitness Expo for Summertime Edition. It's going to be Saturday, May the 6th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Double Tree Hotel. At the Double Tree Hotel in Alsop, Illinois, 5000 West 127th Street. Zumba, kickboxing, body works, boot camp for kids as well as adults. Tickets are $20 in advance, $25 at the door. You already might as well pay the $25 because us black folk, we don't do nothing in advance. We always pop up at the door. So you're going to pay $25. Kids 17 years and under is $10 all day. You can contact Tommy Harrison on Facebook. And he also gave Tommy, what up, dude? What's up, Tommy? And he also gave a phone number for you to reach him. The phone number is 773-620-5085. And you can reach him for payment arrangements. Hello, Miss Tina Steele. I hope your day is going great. We gotta talk about insurance before I go into this next segment. This next segment we're gonna talk about, we gotta get into this. I wanna go into my top, and we ain't gonna spend a lot of time on it because we gotta get to the main event. I want to get into my top worst presidents from five. No, my top best presidents. President I did the worst a couple weeks ago. The top five presidents that I feel, in my opinion, is the top five presidents. And I'm going to go from five to one. And we're going to give a little synopsis, you know, just to break up the, you know, because it, it can get kind of deep. And, you know, especially when we're talking about what people are doing for us, what they aren't doing for us. And comments get rolling through. Let's, let's kind of lighten up a little bit. And we're going to talk about the top five presidents of all time, at least who I think are the top five presidents. So we'll go from five to one. I'll give a synopsis. You'll give a synopsis. you give your opinion. I'll give my opinion. And we'll go from there. Tell us about life, this life insurance. Uh, Mike Daniels. Uh, I got to get the rest of his information because right now it's on there. But Mike Daniels, and I'll hit you with the rest of that information before I get off with the contact information. It's selling life insurance. Don't let your family be stuck with pain bills long after you're gone. Let me tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put you in a cardboard box with some gasoline food on it and set it on fire. They go your cremation because you ain't going to leave me with your bills and I got to bury you. So I'm going to uh, post out the, uh, the uh, information for life insurance with Mike Daniels. You'll be able to contact Mr. Daniels and set up some plans that work for you and your family. Very reasonable plans. And um, you can reach Mike Daniels at 773-263-5128. Again, it's 773- 263-5128. Reach out to Mr. Daniels for your home insurance for your insurance needs. Also, he has some um, Quite sure he got home insurance yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. Home, life, car. Um, all Th of that. This is anything. what we're talking about. Now, see, all we just that. did a whole segment on Black Wall Street, and someone asked the question, why can't we do it again? Here's your chance. Here it is. Here it is. This Contact. is a brother. He's yep. doing his thing. He go. has a service for us. Let's support Mike Daniels. 773-263-5128. Five one two, two eight. eight. Mr. Daniels, for all of your insurance needs, please reach out to him. Don't let a loved one be left in the dark. Top five presidents of all time. Let's go. Now, you remember the sister that we gave, and I'm going to call her sister. You know, she's of Italian descent. The sister that we gave the black card to. Mike Daniels say, I'll bring Wall Street to you. <laughs> That's what's up, Mike. <laughs> we, want, we want our money. <laughs> now, now, I'm about to test her. Now, she got her black card. So, Philomena Palala, if you're still listening... Go ahead, and chime in real quick. Let me know you're still there, because I want you to answer this first question first. I'm about to show you how cold this Italian uh -huh. woman is. All right, let's go. My top five presidents from five to one. Number five. She ain't chimed in, so I know she's still listening. Number five, John Hansen. Philomena Palala, you just got your black card today. You're being called out. Who is John Hansen, and why should he be the fifth best president of all time? Let's give her a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Dun, dun. You need to rest your voice anyway. Go ahead and drink. What I'm doing? Go ahead and drink. I'm, look. All right. Hold on. No, She's here. No, all right. No. I'm going to ask her the question again. Number five, JT's top five president of all time is John Hansen. Philomena Palala. Who is John Hansen? And why do you think he's my top, number five, top five presidents of all time? We'll give you a few seconds to type it in. Go ahead, bro. Tommy's been working out with Tommy for the last couple of weeks, bro. This is a green smoothie with blueberries, uh, kale. Oh, so spanish. you got mad protein in there. Yeah, I'm, I'm getting it in. Thanks, got, Tommy. Good looking. You got mad protein. While Philomena is, is writing that in, I'm going to go from five to one, and then we'll do the synopsis, okay? Okay, let's So, go. my fifth top president of all time is John Hansen. There's so many people out there talking about who is he talking about? Who is John Hansen? My, my fourth favorite president of all time is JFK, John F. Kennedy. And I know a lot of people is asking, well, shouldn't he be like number one or number two? Because he worked directly with Martin Luther King 
But when we give our synopsis, I'm going to tell you why he's only number four. He didn't make it higher. Mm -hmm. My third is Franklin D. Roosevelt. Mm -hmm. Number two, Jimmy Cotter. Mm -hmm. Number one, Barack Obama. Okay, fill him in his type is kind of slow, so therefore, I'm going to go into the synopsis. Go ahead. John Hansen is the first black president of the United States. For those who don't know and for those who don't believe me, and you may say, well, why isn't he on a dollar on any money? Well, he is on money. Go get you a $2 bill yep. and turn it over to the other side. Yep. And what you will see, you will see what is evidently a black man mm -hmm. sitting among all the white faces yes. of Congress. Yes. Now, this is the thing. They didn't call him, he, he, didn't, he wasn't called the president then. Mm -hmm. But what he did pretty much is he was, because he was a more, he wasn't African American like us, of mm -hmm. course. But what he was, he was a black Morse. He was Morse. Yeah. And I'm assuming since he came, since he was over here, I'm going to have to say he was Morse American. Mm -hmm. Now, for those who don't know who the Morse is, the Morse were the most intelligent people. Alexander the Great and all these people who study, how, you got the word university, you know how we call colleges universities? You got the word university for what the Moors set up because everyone was coming to study the universe mm -hmm. from the Moors. Mm -hmm. The Moors taught people of other races, Caucasians and everyone else, they taught them how to wash themselves. They made soap mm -hmm. and they were just the smartest people that there is. So when this country decided to break away from the Brits, they needed someone to direct them into how to go. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't called a president, but he definitely was the leader of the American colonies. His name was John Hansen. He was a black man. Yeah. When you see pictures of when you see pictures of him, you will see him always with George Washington. And a lot of people thought that George Washington was, you know, that was a slate. Mm -hmm. You know, you'll see this black man that was was dressed just eloquently mm -hmm. in red and you know, he's standing there then a couple steps behind him, you see George Washington. Yeah. And for years and years and years, every time we saw that picture, we just automatically assumed that that was George Washington's slave. Yeah. Let me go ahead. Philomena says, sorry, I swear that was, was going to be my answer, that trying that to drive and type yeah. in, LOL. I believe you, Philomena. I really do believe you. Like I said, I've been on hey, your page. So John Hansen is my fifth president of all time because he was the first black president of all time. Well, I'm going from I'm five to one. <laughs> Uh, you, you want to chime in about no, Brother Hanson? No, I mean, Num also, you know what I'm saying, Brother Hanson was the reason why a lot of Englishmen started to dress the way that they dress. You understand what I'm saying? He bought swag to the English, mm. but they'll never say they got it for my brother. No, no, not at all. Go ahead, man. Number four, JFK. Now, I know a lot of people are saying, especially a lot of historians. By the way, you're watching the Two Men in the Mic show. I'm your boy, JT. And I'm your boy, MP. And if the streets are talking about it, we are definitely talking about go it. tell a friend. We're going to wait for about five seconds. Go tell a friend because you know what? It's free and it'll make you smarter. So let, let's give them a few. Yeah, drink, yeah. drink your smoothie and let's, let's reset the vocals, you know, because we use our vocals. Let's reset and let them go get a friend. And I'm going to tell you why John F. Kennedy is only number four in that number three or two where most people think he should be. Yeah. Mm. I want you all to look at this because I do my keep your head up message every morning. So we about to do a combo show. We're doing the two men in the mic show. And this is also the keep your head message for the day. Yep. Read it to him, man. I can't see it because it's right. Well, you, you read it. 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 You never know how strong you are until being strong is the only choice you have. You never know how strong you are. Until being strong the is the only, only choice, choice you have. have. That's your show within the show. That's your keep your head up message for this morning. John F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy did a lot for us as black people. Yep. He got a lot, of, lot, a lot of laws passed with Dr. King that we are still benefiting from to this day. And I'm not going to tell you those laws because I'm going to challenge you to look them up. However, what John F. Kennedy did to the nation of Cuba is inhuman. He is the one. See, Eisenhower was the first president to put the sanctions on Cuba because of the Cuban Missile Crisis. Mm -hmm. But, however, the sanctions that um, Eisenhower put on Cuba was not what John F. K. did. He took it to the whole nother level yeah. where it was just like a, a, a taxing of them or what Eisenhower did, they taxed Cuba. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they basically made them pay for whatever they did to violate whatever orders of that time with the Cuban, you know, with the peace treaty and all that right, stuff. Right, right. But let me tell you what John F. Kennedy did. He shut it down. Yeah. He, no import, no, no export. You go to Cuba to this day, and it looks like an ancient museum. Yeah. You got people riding around in 1950 cars. It's like coming out of reality and, and stepping into a museum that's alive. Happy days. Happy days. Oh, 
that was just inhuman. Yeah. Cubans are suffering to this day because of the sanctions that John F. Kennedy placed on them when um, Eisenhower already had put sanctions on them. Yeah. But, but Kennedy had to take it just to a whole nother level and he shut them down. Yeah. So that's why JFK is only number four. For oh, let's go back. Just for a hot second, uh, Mike Daniels said that uh, uh, talking about uh, John Hanson John Hansen was, was pretty hot, but we should have elaborated a little bit more about the $2 bill. Okay. So if you well, if you turn over the two dollar bill, mm -hmm. you will see what was the Congress of that time. So you will see all the white faces, and I'm glad they did this because they could have easily just made John Hanson one of them. Yeah. But they distinctively graded in because what let's just say the money, even though it's green and white, basically looks as black and white. So mm -hmm. there's no color in the money. Mm -hmm. But I would give it to them. They distinctively graded in his face, yeah. where you can obviously tell this is a person of a different color than everyone else. The only nigger sent up there among all those white people in Congress. And that's because he was the leader. And that would be the reason why they discontinued the $2 And that's why they discontinued the $2 bill. And not only that, that also let us know of another lie that this country taught us in school that I cannot tell a lie. I chopped down his tree, so therefore that's the first president of the United States. No, he probably killed John Hanson. Once they got what they wanted out of him, yeah. and they got he got this company up and running, you know they murdered him. You know they killed him. Yeah, you know what? I think he just he just failed. I don't think they killed him. I think he pretty much well served in, this purpose because again, remember, I, he taught the England their sway. He gave England their sway. Well, when I did the research, when I researched for his death, it says his death is unknown. They killed him, and of course, that's not factual. That's just JT talking to his ass. You think so? Whenever you read something, death is unknown. <laughs> <laughs> they killed his ass. They, and the person who killed him was probably the person who became the first person of the United States. So George Washington probably put the hit out on him. Okay, where are we at? Number three, Franklin D. Roosevelt. I will ask you, my friend, because you're the smart one on the show. I got the big mouth on the show. Why do you think Franklin D. Roosevelt is I the number I have no clue because I don't, I didn't. Do you have parents? Yeah. Do you have older parents? Yeah. Did your parents work their whole life? No. Okay, well. Do you? <laughs> okay, well, whatever. Yeah. Frankly, uh, they, they worked up until they was, they, you know, they got sick. Sure. And then what did they get once they couldn't work anymore? What were they able to receive? What uh, benefit? You know, the, uh, the Social Security uh, and Disability. Uh, say that one more time. Uh, social what? Social Security. Our grandparents and our parents are collecting Social Security because of this man, Franklin D. Roosevelt, who felt that once you reach a certain age and you paid your dues, there should be a benefit that you get. That you get. And actually, he was before his time because what I consider what Barack Obama did with Obamacare is pretty much what Franklin D. Roosevelt did with Social Security. Because at that time, you know, people was totally against that. Yeah. What? We just want to give a person a check for the rest of their life because they can't work no more? Screw them. Pretty much the same thing people are saying about Obamacare to this day. Yeah. So he had fruition mm -hmm. and he was smart and he had a good heart. And he was ahead of his time. He was ahead of his time. Yeah. Wait, well, so he's number three. Yeah. Number two, Jimmy Carter. Yes. Now. Now. Go ahead, go ahead. I, I think your number two should have been your number one. Simple. Whoa, you you in trouble for that. That's yeah, all right. <laughs> you, you in trouble for right, that. <laughs> number two, Jimmy Carter. Don't has, tell them who number one is. J Jimmy Carter has done more for African-American communities and he continues to do things for uh, the humanitarian acts around the world right now. He's still to this as day. old as he is. To this day. To this day from when he was no longer president. This man has traveled and continues to do things. You read in my notes, so I ain't got to say our nothing. people, you know, African American people. And Africans, from, just people from, of color, yes, period. From Ghana to Africa to, to I mean, he, he, he's been doing this thing for over a, a decade. Oh my God, over a decade, over, almost for, for a century. For, you know I mean? That man got to be so, 90 some years old so now. Kudos to Jimmy Carter for continuing this fight to help our people. In America, you know what I'm saying, in other countries and abroad, man. Go, Jimmy Carter, go. Enough said. Number one. And you're right. Had it not been for my prejudices over <laughs> for being black, <laughs> Jimmy Carter would have been number one. Number one, the number one president of all time, Barack Obama. Enough said. This man, to me, I didn't like him as a president. And you know that. And the reason why I didn't like him because I thought he was too nice. I thought he was too soft in a world full of animals. Those people down there on Capitol Hill are animals. They're savages. They did. I want to see one of them jump up and scream, "You a liar to Donald Trump!" Man, you are. He probably gonna get shot on the spot. Shot on the spot. So Barack Obama, one of the, he's. I consider Barack Obama to be Barack Obama. Excuse me. 
to be this generation's version of Dr. King. I really do. That's just how high. Some strong words, my yeah. brother. And you remember how critical I was of him when he was in office. Yeah. I was very he'd get on TV crying because you know I'm like, man, you don't supposed to do that. You the president, you got to be strong. You don't hey, get up like here. Strong men cry. I've had times when I've shed a couple of tears, my brother. Well, I ain't gonna say I was wrong, but I had my opinion. However, now that is all said and done. Barack Obama is the best president this country has ever seen. And I'm going to throw uh, one B in there. And, and you're going to leave you with that by yourself because I'm not going to even comment on it. And you're going to laugh at what I'm about to say. Mm -hmm. As of what I'm seeing going on right now, George W. Bush, the son, wasn't that bad. <laughs> <laughs> because let me tell you why. We're going to go to our, main, we're going to go to our final um, you must segment. You're comparing him to Agent O. Uh, yeah, and I'm going to tell you why. Okay. Because even when George, George W. Bush II was in office, people still pretended that they weren't racist. And I take that now from what I'm seeing now. You know what I'm saying? Listen to what I'm saying. George Washington, George W. Bush II, had it where he didn't make people feel emboldened, where they say, well, we got George uh, Bush in office now. We don't have, now we can show everybody that we're racist like Trump is doing. People still pretended that they weren't racist. And maybe we should have thanked them. Maybe we should have thanked them for their service. Because what we're seeing now is... But you know what? I'm glad we're seeing it now. Because the worst kind of racism mm. is hidden racism. It's hidden racism. So you know what? Now that I know who you are and you've revealed yourself, mm. I know how to deal with you. Let me tell you, I told this one guy... I know how to come at you. I know how to deal with you. I know how to... to I know you hate me. To, no, no, right. So I know how to deal with you when you open up your mouth about things that you have done any research about and you just talking and just be talking. Because if you listen at a lot of those, the rhetoric that are coming out of a lot of those racist guys' mouths, they have no, <laughs> no idea. There's a, a, a guy who goes around asking Trump supporters questions at random. Mm -hmm. And they give some of the craziest answers that you ever seen. So do you think... Um, that uh, Donald Trump and Michael Jackson would have been uh, great candidates. Do you think uh, Michael Jackson would have done? Uh, yeah, I think uh, if Michael Jackson would have ran against him, he probably would have gave him a run for his money. First of all, you know who Michael Jackson is? Yeah. Yeah, he's the guy from uh, mm -hmm. the communist guy. Mm -hmm. that, you know, uninformed, no uninformed, misinformed. We're going to get into our third segment, but before I say that, I got to say this. So, I got to put George uh, W. Bush in there because when he was in office, people still pretended to be racist. Yeah. They didn't feel the emboldened that they felt with Trump, that Trump is in office. That just lets you know just how much hatred Trump uh, spreads, the energy and his spirit that it makes people feel, hey, I ain't got to pretend no more. I don't like you. I told this one guy, this one guy at, the, at work asked me, he said, you don't hate me because of who I voted for, do you? I said, no. I said, but you yes, hate me. Uh, I said, because you, but you hate me because of who you voted for. I want to give a quick story. I was watching Nightline a couple nights ago. And, Nightline, couple nights ago. and you had this woman whose husband was dying from working in the coal mines. And, Black you know, yeah. And it's the Barack Obamacare, it's the Obamacare, rather, that is the reason why he's able to be treated for this. Yeah. And so the uh, guy that was doing the story asked her, asked her, he said, well, how do you, he asked her, he's like, well, how do you feel about Barack Obama? I, I didn't like him. He, he closed down the coal mines. Okay, you can stop right there. Your husband dying is from dying black lung from black lung disease because of the coal mine. Because of the coal mine. Yeah. Barack Obama made sure that your, your husband can get medical treatment for the rest of his life, but you still said you like Donald Trump. Now, go ahead and finish saying what you were saying, though, because that same lady, they interviewed her. See, she didn't know what was about to happen, right? Mm-hmm. So they interviewed the same lady, her along with other coal miners' wives whose husbands were sick, and they told her, they were like, um, that question about Barack Obama, they, well, he didn't like him, but they, you know, it was because of Obamacare that um, your, your husband was able to get um, uh, medical, medical treatment that they need. They was like, yeah, 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 she said, uh, but they're uh, planning on uh, repealing Obamacare and your husband won't be able to get, huh? And she may have to get that far. What, what do you mean that they're, they're going to stop the, 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 the treatments that your And this was Kentucky. Are, they were in Kentucky, yeah, in Kentucky, right? Kentucky. That your husbands are getting right now. They're trying to stop that so they can get those treatments. And she may have to go that far. Your husband is going to die because of the coal mine. Now, I'm quite sure he had to work there 5, 10, 20, 25 years. And all that time, you didn't think to get your ass and go to school, become an RN, become a nurse, so he can get out of that coal mine. 
They want the coal mines back open. Did you hear what Dolly Parton made a song about that? I was born to be a coal miner's daughter. Dude, it didn't even have to get as far as that their benefits would have got cut if Obamacare was repealed. The fact that your husband is about to die because of where he worked, and you would rather see those places open than close down. How stupid are you, you dumb, stupid thing? Don't you say it. See? B, next show. section, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up, let's go. This section of the Two Men on Mike Show, I'm your boy JT. And I'm your boy MP. And if the streets are talking about we it, are definitely talking you can about catch it. all our shows, all our Keep Your Head Up messages, and all our posts. And you can catch all our posts on Philomena Palala's page, too, because <laughs> she, she got that, that's, she's our sister now. She got a black car today. She got it going on. Let's go in with You that can one. catch everything on uh, Two Men and a Mike. That's the number Two Men and a Mike on Facebook. And I'll repost on my page as well, so we can go. I don't need no notes for this next one because this is barbershop talk right here put the notes up get your you get your smoothie get get my coffee and let's go answer the question bernadine dunn say hey big brother what's the topic i gotta here tell you go. but we do got a sponsor for this segment all right and the sponsor for this segment is for the underworld you could type it in on your computer for the underworld now what is for the underworld well his young brother looked around and he figured that we you know how you got a black dating the black dating sites now you know black people live or whatever y'all have a page i can like and follow okay melody i'm gonna say it one more time and thank you for listening you can follow us at the number two men and then mike space between each word on facebook that's where all our live postings are, mm -hmm. uh, all our live shows, all the keep your head up message. Everything that we do is on two men, men and Mike on Facebook, space between each word. Okay, for the, un for the underworld. So you know how you have like black dating and you have a lot. So this brother, he decided that he looked around. He said, well, there's no black alternative to Craigslist or back pages. So he created. So whatever you into, I got to do, I got he's a sponsor, I got to do the read. There's no judgment here. I don't care what you do. If you're into trains, if you're into escorts, if you're into whatever you're into. No, whatever you're into, if you need a job, just imagine a black version of Craigslist and a black version of uh, back pages. It's called For the Underworld. Check it out. Now, this question was posted earlier this week. Uh, for one of for one of my oh yes sisters and your oh yes sisters well pastor terrell i think you're gonna like this question too should a wife not a bussy baby not your jump off not your girlfriend not some woman who you land up on because you can't work and you don't want to work and you want to play playstation and spend all her money <laughs> now we ain't talking about none of that we talk about husbands and wives should a wife be required to dress impressively on a daily basis for their husbands p go <laughs> yes or no? I'm going to say yes and no. Can you do that, though? Yes, I can. Go, okay. Because it's, it's my show. So I'm going to say yes and no. I'm going to say yes depending on the occasion and the situation. I'm going to say no because sometimes, you know, you don't, women all the time don't like, just like me. I don't, I don't feel like you know, shaving and lining up all the time. There are days to where I... You're not I, a woman, though. You know, but still, you know, I know women sometimes don't feel like being sexy. They, they should have a husband, then. They feel like... They should get married. Don't get married. They're on a pair of jogging no. pants mm -mm. and whatever, whatever. I ain't going. Oh, yeah, that's what we know. That's if what you, know I ain't going. If Come you on, want me, go. if you want my attention... See, every man is different. So I'm only uh -huh. going to speak for JT. I got with you for a reason. Because you can talk all this stuff you want. Well, you don't get with a person because of looks. You don't get with a person because of sex. Well, the looks and the sex and all that stuff come first before you get to know that person's personality. I got with you for a reason. The first day I walk... First of all, my answer is yes. A wife should dress on a daily basis to impress her husband. Now, let's define that and break it down a little bit. Yeah, come on. Define it and break it down. What does dress mean? No, dress doesn't necessarily mean full makeup. It doesn't necessarily mean, you know, night, uh, after five evening gown. No, it doesn't mean that. To me, what you ask me, should a woman, should a wife dress impressively for her husband? To me, that means always make sure your hair looks good. Always make sure your breath don't stink. You know, we all go to work. We all eat things. You come home and you brush your teeth. Rinse your mouth out with some Listerine for you get in bed next to me. Um, I don't want to see you with no panty, holes in your panties. But don't real women do that? I don't want to see. Well, you got a lot of women that don't. You know. There's a lot of women that don't. Now, I'm not going to go as far as say those women aren't real, but you got a lot of men that don't put no expectations on their wives. 
There is an expectation that I'm going to put on my wife. You have to keep my attention. So I'm going to tell you what. I'm just going to be real. Don't keep my attention if you want to. Then you ain't, we ain't going to have to worry about it because I'm going to be doing whatever it is I want to do for those who can't give me their attention. And more likely she's going to divorce my black ass. Um, and then, right. I was just going to so say there, you shouldn't have got married. So, I mean, if you have worldly eyes, then you know. Well, you it's not a matter of having worldly eyes. It's a matter of I want the same perception of what I want, of what I saw when I got with you. I don't, now, now, now. Now, here's the thing. Wait, let me just say this because I'm going to tell you this. You ain't got to even be dressed for me when I come home. You can just have on the long hockey socks and have your body not ashy. Yeah, I said it. You know those long softball mm -hmm. socks? Long, you could be butt-ass naked <laughs> and just come out the shower and just, and just oil yourself up and put those long hockey socks, those long uh, softball socks, and say hi. To me, you didn't dress to impress me. So it's not a matter of just full, three, you know, full outfit, full after five evening gown, eyeliner. And make, no, 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 I'm not saying that. It's stupid. Who's going to do that? Keep yourself presentable. So, Keep my so, attention. So, what, so, so I think what should, what, should, what should have been said is, should a woman do the same things that she did to attract you well, that's, in the beginning after you get with her and you guys are married? Well, should but that, that could change? Oh, no, it shouldn't. The same dress, thing that you did to, catch, to get me, to catch my attention, yes, I do believe you should do the same things that you did then. But that's too to broad. We want, we, want, we, want to bring, we want to bring it in. We want to narrow in to specifically how you look. Is your teeth yellow at the end of the day? Do your breath stink at the end of the day? All right, let's see what Melanie says. To impress, I think when you're, when you're proposed and dedicated your life, okay, I think when you, I can't read now, right? He said, to impress, <laughs> I think when you're proposed and dedicated, and dedicated your life to someone, I think your woman, I think your woman have impressed you enough. The problem with that is some men is that they are too concerned. concerned with bullshit. <laughs> bullshit, man. I'm going to tell you why that's bullshit. The same way you go into something is the same way you got to continue something. For example, if I met whoever, if I was, if I marry or what JT meets a wife or whatever, what, however I came to her day one, is I have to continue that to be able to stay in that relationship. If I came to her taking her out, if I came to her buying her flowers, if I came to her with compliments, no, nah, skip that just because we're married and we're dedicated to it's, someone. No, What'd she say? Stop. The problem with some men is that they are too concerned. Whatever. The same thing you did to attract me, and, it, and we're just talking, right. so don't take it personally, Melanie. This is what we do. You know, we, we have a dialogue. Let's speak on it. The same thing you did to get me, it's the same thing. You have to keep me. Go ahead. I'm right, choking. So, so if she has a baby, she's not allowed to gain weight. Uh, da, da, da. Pregnant no, women, out of, nobody said nothing about gaining the weight. Pregnant women are the most beautiful women in the air. Have you ever seen nude pregnant art? Those are some beautiful women, bro. But here's that got thing. nothing to do with See, hold on. This is the problem with sisters, man. They take one thing you say, and they want to open up a whole different box no, of what you're talking about. No one said that. Why you can't? So you saying that you're not beautiful? Bro? Who said that about that's, being pregnant? That was, Who was that? Uh, that was uh, my cousin. Uh, okay, cousin. So you telling me just because you're pregnant, you can't be beautiful? Just because you're pregnant, you can't keep your teeth white? Just because you're pregnant, you can't keep your breath smelling fresh? I, I like Bernadine comments like, so you have to know how your spouse look on a bad day as well. True no, that. I don't. No, I don't. True no, that. I don't. Why well, should I? What? Why should I? It's Why should bad. I? If you wake up See, in the middle of the night this is and you cross each other's I think life. single people are responding. I don't think these people are married. Some of them because, are. Because, let me tell you about because see, single people are one-sided. And that's why single people are single. They don't get the big picture of things. They don't get... There are expectations that, and the same thing go with me. I got to keep my beard trimmed. I have to keep myself looking good for whoever I want to look good for. It go both ways. This is going to go for women as well. No, but we, but the court, but see, I'm reading the question how it was proposed on Sister Chambers' Facebook page. Mm -hmm. She said women. Right. So that's why I kept the question to what she said. Excuse me, you all. I'm burping and belching. Right. <laughs> but well, she did say, should a woman. She said, should a woman. So that's why I'm going with the question, should a woman. Be required to but, dress. I mean, come on. Her mate. And see, that's why, I think, to me, that's why single people remain single. Because they don't get it. They don't understand the expectations of, of what a relationship should be. See, I didn't say that. I said, would you expect her to... No one said nothing about gay. Fat women are beautiful. I love big women. Baby. I'm just trying to get a glimpse of how you look at shit. I'm, I never said pregnant women are unattractive. Well, but no, you didn't say pregnant women were unattractive. Ahead, Liz. But Elizabeth, the way you pose your question, that's pretty much was your premise. Pregnant women are the most beautiful women that there is. I don't care if a woman is 300. Have you ever seen Vesta back in the day? Remember Vesta when she was big? I like the big Vesta better than I like the uh, small Vesta when she passed away. It got Okay, let me rephrase this. It has nothing to do with pregnancy. 
It has nothing to do with weight. It has something to do. The question is, should a should a wife dress to impress her husband on a daily basis? I say yes. Now, dress doesn't have to mean what you think it means. It doesn't mean you have to have your hair. I don't do weave anyway. You got weave? Miss me. Go. Bye. See you. I don't No, Weave is that's not some men love it. Do you? So it ain't that you got to be all weaved up and have on your whole face. No, 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 no. I'm not saying that. We said should a wife be required to dress impressively. Now, I gave the example of what that could mean to me. I can walk in this house. I can come in the house from work. And you could be butt ass naked, just got out the shower. As long as you oiled up and you got on those long hockey socks or those long softball socks, to me, you dress impressively for me. Because that's probably what the thing that you did in the beginning to get me. That's probably one of the reasons why I considered you. Not the reason why I married you before somebody type it in. Not the reason why I married you. But that's one of the things that went into my thought process when I considered taking this woman for a wife. Man, I like them hockey socks she wear. And you know what I'm talking about when I say hockey socks. The socks that come, you ain't even got to even go buy the expensive. You know, it could just be regular sweat socks that the simple, girl could simple, put. Simple things are good. It's the simple things in life simple that keeps men attention. That we ain't got to get into all this if she's fat, if she gained weight, if she... No, 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 I, no, no. I, I give a good example. My, 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 I was attracted to my wife because she looked good without makeup. You understand what But I'm now, saying? when you come and home, then, is her face all crusty? Then, no. Does she got but, crust all in no, her eyes? Is her breath stinking? But the thing about it was, when I saw her in makeup, it like... I'm not a makeup guy either. Blew, it blew mm -hmm. my mind. I mean, she looked, she looked even more fine. You know what I'm saying? So I had pretty much, for me, I felt like I had the best of both worlds. You know what I'm saying? I met her when she, when she had nothing, when she was just natural. And that's what I was attracted to. Sure. The fact that she had a natural beauty that I know that she could either choose to, to add something to right. it if she wanted to right. or keep it plain. She can open up a whole different you know? world of beauty for exactly. you at any given time. Exactly. And to you ladies that come in on it, no, this is just how we talk. Nobody's right or wrong. We're talking about it and we really appreciate you watching and we really appreciate you uh, chiming in. So continue to chime in. Nobody's wrong or right. We're just having a spirit of conversation. And that's, and that's what I was saying to, to my partner. I was like, sometimes women have bad days and they feel like they don't want to dress or they, they might feel, they might want to Lay around and lounge around just how they feel in that day. And I don't have a problem. No, do it before I come home. You know what I'm saying? Do it before I, I come home. But I got a problem I, with I it. I don't have a problem. I don't want to see no, I don't want to. Uh, there are some days that I, I, I like the scruffy McGruff look. I don't. And I might not want to. I might not want to shave every two days or every three days. Nah. I might say, hell, I want to grow my beard in some And more you might have and a. And let it grow. And you might have a woman or a wife. Well, we talk about wives, not women. You might have a wife that that's okay with. You got some women, they ain't rocking that. They want you looking your best when they see you. And I get that. I mean, and I, I mean and, and for those women, it's vice versa. And see, there's three things I don't do. And vice versa. If you want me looking my best at all times, then I expect you to be the same way. There's three things I don't do. I don't do weave, I don't do makeup, and I don't do skinny. Those are three things I just don't do. So, see, I'm pretty simple. You ain't got it. Like I say... Just have on the long socks. Make sure your skin ain't ashy. Long socks. We good to go. To me, that's what dressing impressive. To me, dressing impressive is broad range of a question it is. It kind of narrows down to each individual person. To me, dress impressively means whatever you know that I like, whatever you know that got my attention from day one, you must continue Love to do that. Too, bro. And yeah, Don, ain't nothing wrong with surprising your man. Shit, I like to surprise me all the time. If, 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 surprise me. You had them hockey if, socks on when I come in the house. You know, surprise, look, I love surprises. I'm like a kid. Just pop out. Watch out there, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, surprise me as long as it's, it's a good surprise. Now, don't jump out and get stole on because you know I'm kind of You know what I mean? You know, but surprise me in a good way. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I love surprises because I like to give surprises. You understand what I'm saying? I like to do things that that I used to do. Like I used to write poetry for my wife. I used to sing to my wife. And, you know, and those are and, and guess what? You Even know, though that includes dressing, those were the things that you did to impress her. Yeah. So guess what? Right. If ten years go by and she don't see that one poem, she gonna like, dude, what's up? Yeah. She has you the, with that. let me tell you, and we're gonna I'm gonna let you close it out because today was really your show because you've been absent. But however you go into a relationship, however you go into anything in life. You have to continue it. You can't just go into something to get what you want. Then all of a sudden, you know, bam, just stop it. You just can't do that. I, I like that. Close bro. us out. Go bro talk. Say, go ahead. Close us out, bro. Hell, I love I'm done, y'all. 
But most women don't think we do, though. That's true. A lot of women think, you know, it, it depends on your woman, bro. It depends on the type of female that you're with. Because, you know, I, I, I love the dress. You know, I, I, don't, I don't mind. I, I love to throw on some nice slacks and a nice shirt or a suit or whatever. Let me get Liz in. Yeah. Let me read Liz. I want to read Miss Liz because she, she comes with some good stuff. I make sweatpants and sloppy bun look good, though. And guess what? You just might do. Real and that could be your way of impressing your husband. He might like them sloppy pants. Because let me tell you, if you got a big butt, you <laughs> always can tell a big butt of sloppy pants. So you already know. So if, I, so if you see a chick for the first time, she got on some sloppy pants or jogging pants, and that butt is just like, if, that, if she dripping ass and, and jogging pants and sloppy pants, you already know how it's going to look fitted. So I'm with you, Liz. You probably do make it look good. But Liz, check this out. I can't come home to you and your breath to smell like the food and you ate all day. I can't come home to you and say you didn't got off work because I don't, you know, you got to work. I ain't no laying at home. Let's say you get off work before I do and you got crust all in your eye and you greet me at the door with, with stinky breath and crust. That's what I, that's my definition of dressing. Have them teeth shining, have that crust out your eye, have some lotion on that butt and have them hockey but socks you know on what, and I'm impressed. That's, that's it. That's just, you just described a trifling woman. I don't think... See, Man, you know I mean, all, what? Really? First, first, you know what I mean? Trifling women are married. I mean, come, you know why? Men don't put expectations on women no more. Well, Men just want well, a woman. Well, guess you, what? You, you, gotta, no, you I, a trifling I, man if you want somebody who right. got stinky breath now, across dude, the Dude, you know it's a bunch of trifling men out there. You know what I'm saying? You just... That's just, like one every five men what, don't want to work. You know and I can't stand I mean? a man that lay up with a woman. I can't stand a man that move in with a woman. You know I mean? If I got my own condo and she got her own condo, either... She gonna rent hers out, or she gonna sell it? Cause guess what? I'm putting the roof over the head for my family. Mm -hmm. I, you got a lot of trouble. You got men that don't want to work. And you're listening to the Two Men in the Mic Show. I'm your boy MP. I'm your boy JT. And if the streets are talking about it, we're talking about it. We want to thank you guys for tuning in <laughs> to the show. Today. You ain't trying to get in no trouble. <laughs> right, look, hey, they're gonna be talking about this. We love y'all, man. Long after we, hey, long thank after you we, all. We love we you sign all. Off, they gonna be all. They can, I'm, and I love, <laughs> got y'all thinking. Remember what I said. I want y'all to next Let me time get my people out. Peace out, y'all. Bravo, gentlemen. That's a hot show. You Thanks. black now, Philomena. You got your card. I don't know how your Italian family going to feel about it, but we next, love you. I'm out. Peace. The next time.